This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you guys are interested in starting your own website, make sure you guys head over to squarespace.com and start your free trial. And you can also head over to squarespace.com forward slash YC Imaging for 10% off your first purchase. Link will be down in the description. Yo, what's going on guys? Today, I got some good old fashioned BTS content for you guys. I wanna show you what a no budget music video shoot looks like for me. Yes, no budget, no money was put into my pocket from this music video, but I did come out of pocket to put some money into it. And that's something that I always do. I'm always down to take a little bit of an L if it's gonna make the video a little bit more creative and fun and more interesting for the viewer to look at. In return, you know, if I put out something good, I'm able to make some more money back from that. So no money was put into this music video other than the money that came straight out of my pocket. I wanna show you guys how I transformed my house into a really cheap, cool looking music video set. This music video was filmed over the span of like two months. So I'm gonna be checking in every now and then from this seat to tell you guys and update you on how I felt about certain shots and why I did certain things in the music video. But let's get straight into it, let's go. Right now we're at a party store. I got some balloons I wanna get for this video. So the song I'm shooting a video for today is very slow. It's very mellow and chill. It has a little bit of a message behind it and I just wanted to make this video very artsy, kinda dark and mysterious and make the viewer question what's going on and what is actually wanting to be given off throughout the video. So, balloons are awesome. I like black balloons because they're dark. And that's where we're gonna go get. This is two pack right here. 12 inch balloons, pretty big, but I need. So I wanna make a balloon backdrop for this video. And they, they have this. I saw this online, but I don't know what it does. Let me look into this real quick. So the last thing that I need is a balloon pump. I'm not sure if they have one or not, but if not, I'm just gonna have to do this the old fashioned way, which is gonna suck and I'm gonna be lightheaded, but you gotta get it done. First mission is complete. I was able to get a backdrop kit for the balloons, which is something that I wanted to put together. I had no idea how I was gonna do it, but I was determined, and it just so happened that they had the kit there, so I lucked up with that. I got black balloons, also got some retro mints because I'm into old school stuff, so had to pick those up. Next thing that we're gonna try to pick up is some cups, red cups, drinking red cups, partying, just all kind of sort of ties into the concept of the song, so we gotta go get those, and uh, might be something else I wanna get, but I don't know about that, we'll see. So now I'm at Lowe's. What I'm going for here, what I want here, I wanna get some blinds. What I'm thinking is I'll have this scene of Keith, him in like a dark corner, but I want the lighting source to look like it's coming through blinds. So I figure if I can get some cheap blinds, I can shine them through there and it'll work. I don't know, I've never really simulated this look before. This is more so just a trial and error thing for me, so better for me to try it than you guys to go waste money and this is not exactly how you do it. So if I can find something that's affordable, I'll definitely pick it up, let you guys know exactly what I get if I get something. So here you guys see us setting up this balloon scene. Now this basically just started with us blowing up 80 balloons, which took way more time than I expected it to take. But it was fairly simple to do. It wasn't too hard to do. We just blew them up and then we kind of just put them into a piece of plastic. And the backdrop looked nothing like how it looked on the actual wrapper for the drop. But I mean, at that point, we just had to go with what we had. It wasn't ugly, but it definitely didn't look like how it looked on the actual packaging. So once we got all the balloons into it, we just went into my garage and we taped up the backdrop kit onto the wall. And from there it was really just us playing around with framing and trying to get it to look as best as possible with Keys and the actual frame of the music video because we weren't able to cover my entire wall. We just had to kind of get a space that looked good in the frame, basically. So we got the backdrop on the wall. We got Keith into the set. And this scene is lighted fairly simple. So the only light source well, was actually two. The main key source light for this is the Young Nuo YN360. This is a very cheap light. I did a kind of a, a review on this light a long time ago. I think it's around a hundred bucks. You can probably get it for cheaper on like Amazon or eBay, but we just have this light and it's basically on a boom arm off of a C-stand shooting down on Keys in the background. And this is our key source. There's only one light uh, and it's just providing us some really dramatic looks for the scene that we're doing. Now, the next light that we have into the scene is the Aperture 120D Mark II. And I've been using this light so often for my music video stuff. Like even before I got the version two, I was using the version one. But the version two is like amazing because within it, it has like lighting effects. So we're using a lighting effect for this actual scene to give it a little bit of a stylistic look. We're using the lightning effect on the light, which basically just flickers on and off like lightning every now and then. And this is just 
there to add some stylistic looks into it. Uh, it has no other benefit other than that. This scene would have looked perfectly fine with just the Young Nuo 360 over top, but we decided to add this in to give it a, more of a dramatic and stylistic look for the shot. Now for this scene, I used the Syrup Magic Carpet Pro slider. I just recently did a review on this slider. If you're interested about it, go check it out. And we're using the Sony a7 III for this entire video, but for this specific shot that you guys are seeing right here, I'm using the Sigma 24 millimeter F1.4 R lens. And this is just to get out a wide shot coming in on the slider. Now me, when I film my music videos, I almost never use autofocus, but when I use a slider, the majority of the time I'm actually using autofocus just because it's a fairly slow motion and it's fairly easy for the camera to keep up with it. And you know, it's kind of reliable at that point. So I'm using the slider with the Sigma and I'm using autofocus and I'm just getting some really clean push in and push out shots. Now the overall vibe of what I wanted to get with this, it's a very mellow portion of the song that I knew for a fact that I wanted to film here at this specific location. And it's just me going in and out, it's very smooth. And I got some close up shots as well, which I swapped out the Sigma 24 millimeter for the Canon 100 millimeter F2.8 macro lens. And for these shots, I have the slider stationary and I'm just basically filming keys. I knew in post that I was gonna replicate a little bit more movements with keyframes. So I just shot that shot stationary. For one shot in the scene, I wanted to simulate kind of a drunk vibe for it. So what I did was I lowered the shutter way down on the camera and I filmed a performance of Key Straight On in this exact same setting. And it's turned out really dope. It's very wavy. It has like a lot of motion blur to it and it just simulates and gives you a drunk feeling when you're looking at the shot. And that was that for that scene. One month later, we decided to dive into some more of the performances for this music video. Look, it's like a month later since the last shots you guys seen in this music video, but we're back in the crib and we're back finishing up this poor video for Keys. And uh, the majority of the stuff that we're gonna be doing today is gonna be also inside the house. Just some really stylistic stuff that we thought to do that doesn't really cost a lot of money. So if we take a look at the set right now, you can see we got Keys right here laying down. Um, and we just got a bunch of newspapers. These cost us like what, three bucks? Three dollars costs like three dollars to get all these newspapers. Um, we got some red cups that you guys saw me cop at the beginning of the vlog, the BTS. Um, we just crushed them up and put them around keys to look good. You know, just that added color pops to these shots look really good. Yeah, so we just got the 120D Mark II with the light dome mini shining down on keys, and then we got the C stand with this uh, rigged up overhead rig that. Uh, yeah. It's just gonna be the first shot that we're gonna get and then we got another setup that we're gonna be doing today also with some more uh, newspaper inside of the house in a second. So um, what I plan to do with this shot is, it's gonna be stationary uh, obviously when we film it, but in post I'll zoom it and add some movement into it with keyframes, maybe some spins and some zooms and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it's pretty much what we're gonna be doing. These shots right here turned out to be some of my favorite shots from the shoot, and they were so cheap and simple to achieve. Basically, we just went out, grabbed a couple newspapers, ran us probably like four bucks, and we just laid them out on my floor, and it's just masking the house look. I didn't want it to have like a vibe like we were in my house shooting music video. I wanted to mask that, and this was a really simple and cheap way to achieve this look. For the wide shots on this, I'm using the 24 millimeter F1.4 Sigma art lens, and for the close-up shots, I swapped out with the Canon 50 millimeter f1.4 lens really simple shots i got the movement in post using keyframes i decided to add a little bit of rotation to it make it look like a spinning zooming in and out and these shots actually turned out a lot better than i thought they were going to turn out so for this next setup we just took the newspapers from the previous setup and we taped them up on my wall using some regular clear tape. Really simple process to do. I just wanted to mask the corner of my dining room, like I said, to make sure that we weren't giving off the feeling that we were in my house somewhere. So really simple and cheap way to do this was to use the newspaper. All right, so the breakdown is lighting setup for this uh, the scene that we're doing. We're using the Aperture 120D Mark II again, but on this we have the Fresnel 2X, which is Aperture's latest Fresnel mount for the Aperture 120D. And uh, I can go on pretty much any other Bowens mount light as well. So basically what this does is it helps us focus the light. So if we spin this, we can get a more accurate beam of light or we can go to flood and it'll just make the light go out wider. So wide, narrow, beam, whatever. <laughs> so basically we're shooting this through these blinds that I got from Lowe's and this is just kind of giving us an effect like uh, like like lights coming through your window. Now with the Aperture 120D Mark II, you can also do lighting effects. So this is coming in clutch for us as well. If I turn this on, you can see that they have a lightning preset for effects. So basically we got this on, it's giving us some cool flickering through. And it's just kind of like he's in a dark room. 
very depressed and dark look for this. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it goes on, but it also goes off as well. So to fill in for that light when it goes off, we have the aperture. I don't even know what this thing is called. I put it up on the screen because I totally freaking forgot. But this is Aperture's latest little portable light. And this thing can go underwater. We're not going underwater today, obviously, but we just have a blue gel on it just to fill in, give us more of that, uh, that dark, deep fill for the video. And uh, yeah, we also got some haze in a can right here as well. I don't know if you guys know about at atmosphere aerosol. It's basically just haze in a can. And uh, this is a cool little atmosphere filler for the room just to get like some beams of light through here. And, you know, just give us a little bit of haze through the shot. So that's the lighting setup. And these were 100% my favorite shots out of this entire video. Everything from the color that the Aperture MW light was giving off to the haze to the movement, to the way we shot the light through the blinds, through the, like everything about this shot was so perfect to me. And I feel like it matched the vibe of the song so well. It's so dark, it's so moody. It's just such, it's just such a vibe, man. So for these couple of shots with Keith in the corner, the wide shots were shot on the Sigma 24 millimeter. I'm gonna link everything down in the description. I just wanna kinda give you guys an insight to the lenses that I use for the certain shot. So for the wide shots, we use the Sigma 24 millimeter. And then on the close shots, I swapped out to the Canon 100 millimeter F2.8 macro lens. Now, before we get into the rest of this BTS, I gotta pay some bills. So I'm gonna give some shout outs to the sponsors of this episode, the people over at Squarespace. Now you guys know what Squarespace is. You hear me talk about it all the time, but the importance of having a website in this day and age is crucial. You have to have a website. You have to have a place to showcase your work or sell services or products or whatever the case may be. You have to have some sort of website. Now Squarespace is a dope place to be because they have designer templates, which are simple and easy to use. You can get a domain there and they also have 24 seven customer support. So if you ever find yourself in a jam while you're creating your website, you can just hit them out right in the chat and they'll hit you right back. So for anybody out there who was viewing this video and they're ready to take their business to the next level, make sure you guys hit up squarespace.com right now and start your free trial. You can also head over to squarespace.com forward slash YC Imaging for 10% off your first purchase. Link will be down in the description. Let's get to the rest of this BTS. So day three of the shoot for Keys, we are now doing some more B-roll for this. It's uh, kind of tying a little bit of a story or just, uh, just a vibe, I guess. We got some really dope performances, so right now we're just doing straight B-roll stuff. So what we're doing right now is, I don't know if you guys have ever seen like a music video, like the movies where they have like the guys, we have like the, the vest, the vest, mounts for the cameras and then they walk around parties and they just look drunk. We're trying to simulate that look right now but we don't have one obviously so I figure if we just use a tripod and kind of like walk around with it like vlog style he's, he won't have both hands open but he'll have one so he can drink and it'll just I don't know it'll give that vibe so that's what we're trying to do now. We're using a A7 III with a 24 millimeter f1.4 by Sigma. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So for the last day of filming, I really just wanted to go through B-roll and kind of add some sort of story and message behind what we were filming for the music video. We had already had some really solid performances, but I just wanted to make sure that the B-roll there matched the vibe of the song as well. Basically the vibe that we were going for for these B-roll shots was just a uh, drunk night out. So we wanted the shots to be very lonesome. We wanted them to be very dark and like just, in your own head and just to yourself. And that's what we filmed this night, filming this B-roll. So for the makeshift vest cam shots, I had Keith do a bunch of different gestures. I had him walk around, I had him look around, I had him stumble around, I had him spin around in circles. I just wanted to get a unique perspective on somebody who was feeling drunk, you know? So I had Keith do a bunch of different things and I just chopped through it. Not a lot of it made it into the actual music video, but I knew this is what I wanted to give off with the vibe of this B-roll. For the lighting that we use for these couple of shots, we just really utilized the lighting from the location. It was bright in certain spaces, but I didn't want to add any artificial lighting into this. Plus I knew that the low light on the Sony was just gonna be amazing anyway. So we decided to just utilize the light that was there. The space was very bright. It was a lot of good bokeh in these shots. And I just wanted to keep the feel natural for the video. So for these next couple of shots inside of the car, I use a suction cup car mount for these. Now I low-key stole this mount from Creative Ryan a couple months ago. So if I can find a name to this and a link for the product, I'll make sure to link it down below. It's fairly cheap and it works really good for the price. But um, yeah, so the way I rigged the camera up into the car was using this mount. Now for these shots, I knew I wanted to kind of get a unique perspective. Usually when you use like suction cup car mounts for cameras, you film through the windshield or you film from the outside of the car. What I did was I mounted the camera inside of the car to give that unique perspective that you were actually there and you were kind of just watching Keese's demise in these shots. 
So this is where stuff went bad on the drunk night for him. You know, we wanted to simulate a car crash. So uh, we'll get to that in a second. But uh, for these shots, the lens that I decided to use was a Sigma 24 millimeter f1.4. Uh, and for lighting, we really utilized a lot of the lighting from the outside of the car, but I also used the Aperture MW to add some flares into the shot as well. Now, originally I was gonna use the Aperture MW to key light keys in the car, but like while we were filming, I noticed that I just accidentally shined it into the camera and I figured like, yo, that looks really cool. So I decided to go with the flares to fill in a lot of those dark spaces in the shot and to keep the dark and moody vibe for the video. So the lighting was basically, you know, stuff from outside of the car and it was just me actually like off to the side of the camera like we shot from the passenger side window but i was in the passenger seat and the way that the shot was framed you couldn't see me and i was just kind of like waving the light in front of the, the the lens from time to time to fill in a lot of the dark spaces for the shot and add some cool looks for the video so that was that a lot of simple shots um i got shots of Keish like drinking in the car and just driving and uh, I just wanted the viewer to to see that he was drunk driving, you know, basically. So the last and final shot for this video, the car crash scene. Now, creator Ron and I had done the car crash thing a couple years ago in a project for a client. And I knew for a fact that when I heard this song and the B-roll that I wanted to get for it, I wanted to kind of simulate a car crash just because of the message behind the song. And it was actually really simple to do. So basically the way that we filmed this is we got the cars as close as possible to each other and uh, we just had them mash the gas and go in reverse like this. And then in post, we just reverse the shot and it just looks like the cars are about to hit each other before the video closes out. So um, that was a really simple shot for us to get. And I used the Sigma 24 millimeter F1.4 to get that shot. And that's that. This video really had no budget to it. I spent a couple of dollars out of my pocket to get the balloons, to get the newspaper. Um, and I just utilized the equipment that I had available to me already. So, I mean, this for me, this is a no budget music video shoot. Uh, and hopefully this gave you some tips to get creative with filming spaces like I filmed in my house You can go get some newspapers for a couple dollars. You can spray paint on these newspapers You can color these newspapers paint you can do so many different creative things for a little bit of money So think outside of the box utilize what you have and you can get out there and create some really creative stuff with no money as well if You guys enjoyed this video man make sure to drop it a like if you have any questions uh, Make sure to drop those down in the comments. I'll get back to those as soon as possible and that's that, man. If you're new here, make sure you consider subscribing to the channel. I'm out, guys. Peace.